Hello and welcome back to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about translation. So what is the purpose of this process? It is the creation of an amino acid polypeptide or protein from an mRNA strand and it takes place in the cytosol of the cell. This process can be divided into two main phases, the initiation and the elongation. In the initiation phase, a tRNA or transfer RNA and methionin bind to the 5' prime end on a mRNA where the GTP cap indicates the start and they start to go along the mRNA until they find their start codon. A start codon is a triplet of A, U and G bases and there methionine will bind to the P binding site within the large subunit of the ribosome. This is also where the elongation phase starts. The next tRNA will bind next to the first tRNA that we used in the initiation phase and will park in the A binding slot until both these amino acids are connected by a peptide bond. Now a movement will happen which is described differently in different literature. So in some sources it says that the ribosome moves and in other sources it says that the mRNA moves. So just ask your professor what they want to hear in the exam, whether the ribosome moves in a sliding uh, way so that the small subunit goes first under the large subunit and then the large subunit moves over the small unit so that they have the mRNA in between them and the ribosome moves or if the ribosome is like a workbench for the mRNA so that the mRNA can be moved through the ribosome. Then always the same kind of process will happen that tRNA will bind to the A site then the ribosome or the mRNA depending on the literature will move then it will go to the P site then the next one binds to the A site then the E site will give will be the exit site where the tRNA will leave after the amino acid connected to the tRNA is connected to the other amino acids so that the amino acids will build a chain which is connected to the P site of the ribosome. When a triplet codes for a stop codon, then a specific protein called a release factor binds to the P site instead of a amino acid. It carries a water molecule which is added to the amino acid chain. So the chain and the tRNA are being separated and then the amino acid will be the primary structure of the protein and this newly created protein will change its configuration and will become the 3D figure or combine with other amino acid chains to form a quaternary structure. The ribosome and the mRNA will separate from each other and the ribosome will be reused in a new translation process. Now I want to mention the role of GTP. GTP I mentioned earlier in the initiation phase but it's also the energy that drives the whole process. GTP, so guanine triphosphate, is broken down to GDP, guanine diphosphate, and an inorganic phosphate. And it is needed when the tRNA is binding to the codon on the mRNA, then for the movement of the mRNA by one codon, or the movement of the ribosome, again depending on the literature. And we can calculate the total energy expenditure of translation. It is 4n, where n means the number of amino acids in a chain. So if our amino acid chain is 50 amino acids long, we will need 4 times 50 GTP molecules. So the whole process will use up 200 GTP molecules. Now I quickly want to talk about the structure of the tRNA. You can see it here on the poster on the right side. It has different places and arms. So on the top part is the amino acid binding place. This is where, as the name says, the amino acid is bound to until the amino acid will be connected to another amino acid by a peptide bond. Then we have different arms, the T arm, the D arm and the variable arm. They're giving the tRNA their specificity. And then we have the anticodon, the perhaps most important place of the tRNA. 
It is formed by three bases and it helps in recognizing the binding site for the specific amino acid on the mRNA. I drew it more in a scheme-like manner within the ribosome where you can see where the anticodon is carrying the bases which are connecting to the mRNA. Yeah, on the amino acid binding site an ester bond is formed between the amino acids and the amino acid binding site on the tRNA. So um, an amino acyl tRNA is formed as long as the amino acid is connected to the tRNA and just a normal tRNA or transfer RNA is the non-amino acid carrying form. I hope everything about the process was clear. If you have questions you can post it in the comments, I will try to answer as soon as possible. And if everything was clear, that's it for now. Feel free to also watch the other videos and I would be very happy about a subscription.